Hello folks, in this video we are talking about James Webb Space Telescope and all details and rumors about this. James Webb Space Telescope JWST, US European Space Agency Canadian Satellite Observatory proposed as the successor to the Hubble Space Telescope and scheduled to be launched by an Ariane 5 rocket in 2021. The JWST will have a mirror 6.5 meters, 21.3 feet in diameter seven times larger than that of the HST, and will orbit the Sun in a litigious pattern around the second Lagrangian point, about 1.5 million kilometers from Earth on the planet's night side. The telescope is designed primarily to detect light in the infrared to observe source such as the first galaxies and protostars that radiate at those wavelengths. Since infrared satellite observatories must be protected from thermal radiation, a sun shield of about 150 square meters in the area will be deployed to protect the telescope. Since there is no rocket wide enough to hold the JWST, both the sun shield and the mirror will be launched folded and will unfold when the telescope reaches its proper orbit. Canadian Space Agency Canadian Space Agency CSA, French Agency Spatiale Canadienne, a Canadian government organization founded in 1989 that coordinates space flight activities. Its headquarters are the Longueuil Queue. The chief executive of the CSA is the president, who is assisted by the senior vice president and the directors of four branches, space science, space technologies, space programs, and general operations. The president reports to the minister of industry. The CSA is responsible for the Earth's observation satellite radar SAT-1, which uses radar to monitor Earth's resources, and the most orbiting telescope, which studies physical processes in stars. International cooperation with other space agencies agencies is an important part of the CSA's missions, Canada Arm. The robotic arm on the US space shuttles was built in Canada to the International Space Station. The CSA has contributed two robotic systems, Canada Arm 2, a manipulator arm, and Dextre, a two-armed robot that can be used to repair equipment outside the space station. European science satellites such as Herschel and Planck also benefited from carrying instruments developed in Canada. Satellite. All the planets in the solar system except Mercury and Venus have natural satellites. More than 160 such objects have so far been discovered, with Jupiter and Saturn together contributing about two-thirds of the total. The planet's natural satellites vary greatly in size. Some of them measure less than 10 kilometers, 6 miles in diameter. As in the case of some in Jupiter's moons, a few are larger than Mercury. For example, Saturn's Titan and Jupiter's Ganymede, each of which is more than 5,000 kilometers in diameter. The satellite also differs significantly in composition. The moon, for example, consists almost entirely of rock material. On the other hand, the composition of Saturn's Enceladus is 50% or more ice. Some asteroids are known to have their tiny moons. Artificial satellites can either be unmanned or manned. The first artificial satellite to be placed in orbit was the unmanned Sputnik 1, launched October 4, 1957 by the Soviet Union. Since then, thousands have been sent into Earth's orbit. Various robotic artificial satellites have also been launched into orbit around Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, as well as around the Moon and the asteroid Eros. Spacecraft of this type are used for scientific research and other purposes, such as communication, weather forecasting, navigation, and global positioning. Earth resource management and military intelligence examples of manned satellites include space stations, space shuttle, orbiters circling Earth, Earth and Apollo spacecraft in orbit around the Moon or Earth. Satellite Observatory Satellite Observatory Earth orbiting spacecraft that allows celestial objects and radiation to be studied from above the atmosphere. Astronomy from Earth's surface is limited to observation in those parts of the electromagnetic spectrum that are not absorbed by the atmosphere. Those parts include visible light and some infrared radiation and radio waves. The ability to place instruments in space opens all regions of the spectrum to observation, even when operating in those wavelengths that penetrate to Earth's surface, an observatory in space avoids the problems of seeing caused by atmospheric turbulence and airflow. 
Beginning in the 1960s, the space agencies of the United States and several other countries independently and in cooperation developed satellite observatories specifically instrumented to explore cosmic phenomena in the gamma ray, X ray, ultraviolet, visible, and infrared regions. Among early spacecraft of note were the International Ultraviolet Explorer, which studied faint objects in the ultraviolet region, and the infrared astronomical satellite, which mapped the sky in the infrared region, finding hundreds of thousands of new stars and galaxies. The Hubble Space Telescope provided images of the unprecedented resolution in visible and ultraviolet light, while the Compton Gamma Ray Observatory and the Chandra X-ray Observatory 1999 permitted the investigation of gamma ray and X-ray sources, respectively. Other spacecraft such as Yohawk and Hinode was specifically designed for studying various aspects of the Sun. Although most observatories in space orbit Earth, a few have exploited orbits around the Sun. For example, the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory was maneuvered to the vicinity of a gravitational balance point, the Sun-Earth Langarian points, located about 1.5 million kilometers sunward of Earth in that location, it observed the Sun uninterruptedly, without having to pass through Earth's shadow. The Spitzer Space Telescope, an infrared satellite observatory, was placed into the solar orbit with a period of revolution that caused it to drift away from Earth at a rate of 15 million kilometers per year. This keeps the telescope away from the thermal radiation of Earth. Infrared Astronomy Infrared astronomy, a study of astronomical objects through observations of the infrared radiation that they emit. Various types of celestial objects, including the planets of the solar system, stars, nebula, and galaxies, give off energy at wavelengths in the infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum. The techniques of infrared astronomy enables investigators to examine many such objects that cannot otherwise be seen from Earth because the light of optical wavelengths that they emit is blocked by intervening dust particles. Infrared astronomy originated in the early 1800s with the work of the British astronomer Sir William Herschel, who discovered the existence of infrared radiation while studying sunlight. The first systematic infrared observations of stellar objects were made by the American astronomers W. W. Koblenz. Edison Petit and Seth B. Nicholson in the 1920s modern infrared techniques, such as the use of cryogenic detector systems to eliminate obstructions by infrared radiation released by the detection equipment itself, and special interference filters for ground-based telescopes, were introduced during the early 1960s. By the end of the decade, Jerry Neugebauer and Robert Leighton of the United States had surveyed the sky with the relatively short infrared wavelength of 2.2 micrometers and identified approximately 20,000 sources in the northern hemispheric sky alone. Since that time, balloons, rockets, and spacecraft have been employed to make observations of infrared wavelength from 35 to 350 micrometers. Radiation at such wavelengths is absorbed by water vapor in the atmosphere. And so telescopes and stratigraphs have to be carried to high altitudes above most of the absorbing molecules, specifically instrumented high-flying aircraft such as the Kuiper Airborne Observatory and the Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy has been designed to facilitate infrared observations near microwave frequencies. In January 1983, the United States, in collaboration with the United Kingdom and the Netherlands, launched the Infrared Astronomical Satellite IRAS, an unmanned orbiting observatory equipped with a 57-centimeter infrared telescope sensitive to wavelengths of 8 and 100 micrometers. IRAS made several unexpected discoveries in a brief period of service that ended in November 1983. The most significant of these were clouds of solid debris around Vega, Famalont, and several other stars, the presence of which strongly suggests the formation of planetary systems similar to that of the Sun. Other important findings include various clouds of interstellar gas and dust where new stars are being formed as an object. Phaeton, thought to be the parent body for the swarm of meteoroids known as Geminides. So I hope you guys liked our video. For more videos, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for more videos. Thanks for watching this video and have a wonderful day.